Good morning and welcome to It Matters. Today we have five wonderful pastors all bringing you a message on moving into your purpose. Please welcome my friend, Bishop Harold Calvin Ray. Bishop Ray, please share your ministry with us. Thank you, Joseph. Good morning to you. We are welcome to join us anytime. West Palm Beach, Florida, Redemptive Life Fellowship. My wife, Brenda, and myself, pastor there. We'd love to have you. 2101 South North Australian Avenue in West Palm, Sundays at 10 and Tuesdays at 7. Thank you, Bishop. We're looking forward to your message on Thanks, moving into your purpose. Thank you so much. Blessings. As Joseph said, today is going to be about moving into your purpose. And there could be nothing greater or more critical, perhaps, than understanding the digressions as well as the progressions toward the divine purpose God has for you. Nothing God has created is without purpose. And so the definition and the understanding and the implementation of purpose is everything in life. There's a story that I heard years ago by Michael Hyatt, actually reading one of Michael Hyatt's books, that talked about how he and his wife went out snorkeling. And uh, they began their explora the exploration of a very pristine lagoon area. And they had never before seen aquatic life. And so they were very excited to see the bright and resplendent colors of the fish that were there. And they began going through the plants and the coral reef. And they just were exceeding their expectations as they were snorkeling beneath the, the uh, surface of the water. And the more and more they snorkeled, they lost sight of where they were. And they began to drift more than a mile out to sea. And so when they got out and they came up uh, above the surface, they could see hotels in the far distance. They were a mile out at sea. The shoreline was visible, but it seemed impossible to swim back at that point. And so they had to somehow uh, get a hold of a paddleboard and they worked as a team to paddle back to shore against the odds. And over an hour later, exhausted back at the hotel, they're collapsing on the sand because what started off as a purposeful trip became a drifting away. Isn't that so true of what happens oftentimes in life? We begin with zeal, we begin with energy, we begin with anticipation, we have strategic plans, we have different things that we pursue with gusto, we have a freshness in the atmosphere, we have innovation and excellence that we're going uh, toward our purpose with. And then somewhere along the line, you wake up and you realize that your dream, your purpose, your destiny seems to have taken a hit. It's not dead by far, but somehow it seems as if it's been dialed back. It seems as if what was innovative and industrious has now become a drift. And with that discovery comes a decision we have to make. We have to determine, as I'm encouraging many of you today, determine whether or not we're going to live in mediocrity and indifference, or we're going to be intoxicated with passion for purpose. That's the challenge and the fork of the road that many of us are at perhaps today. Listen, let me tell you something. It's nothing to be ashamed of if you find yourself somewhat adrift from what you know somehow is a core passion and purpose. What would be ashamed is if you don't regroup and take a moment to get in God's presence and say, God, I really want to capture the reason I've been captured by you. I want to have the essence of my life truly become the purpose for which you have created me and then dispatched me from heaven, from eternity into time. I know that you're not accidental. I know that you're not coincidental. I know that you are entirely providential. And I want the providential purpose for my life to come to fruition beginning right now. Well, a life purpose helps you do that. Defining a life purpose helps us do that. Someone once said, I don't think we can do what God wants us to do until we become who God wants us to become. Think about that. That's critical. And that's why we begin to look at Defining a life purpose. What is the real reason I actually exist? That's what purpose really is asking. That's what the question of purpose is. What is the real reason that I exist? How do we, under, how do we decide that? Well, we have to talk to God in prayer. We have to search scriptures. We have to really hear God. And then we have to follow to some degree the signals of our passion. The signals of what angers us, what impassions us, what causes our compassion to ebb. Those are signals, not necessarily the final verdict on what your purpose is. A clue to purpose, however, is the calling that you discern to be upon your life. A calling is a vocation that you give yourself unreservedly to, and it arouses a passionate desire for excellence to be your best in it. Some things don't even move you. Other things, you become like, you know, a, a horse uh, sniffing fresh water after they've been on a long journey. It's something that arouses your passion immediately. It's a thing you're able to do because of your interest, your gifting, and your capability. 
your capabilities, your asset, your skill sets are a signal of things God has already implanted within you that with anointing on them bring you into your purpose. But thirdly, not only is there the definition of purpose and a clue to it by calling, you also have to discern what really is my vision. You see, it may be that all you're at a stalemate about is your vision. It may be what you need to do is not a new calling, but refurbish your vision. In other words, a new vision can spring up from gratitude for what God has already done. The motivation cannot merely be wanderlust, but it's for you becoming truly what God and who God wants you to become. If life purpose describes in a general way why you exist, and if calling is the vocation you give yourself to that arouses your passion, then vision describes in a specific way of what you dream of accomplishing. That's what I want you to get a hold of today. I want you to take a moment, take some time, refresh your DNA of your memory banks. Why do I really exist? What really impassions me? What is it that angers me? What is it that I feel more than anything else God wants me to center on and move toward with a passion? So appreciate your uniqueness in God. And then secondly, connect with special people that create an environment for you to enjoy and help someone else. I believe in serving, we find the pathway to what God really wants us to do. Many people never get there because they refuse to have a servant's heart. When we serve, we are elevated by God into true life's purposes. Finally, challenge yourself to grow and mature. Don't stay where you are. What can you do better? I'm not talking about being just preoccupied with an over preoccupation for doing something better or having you know, that, that type of attitude, but we want to mature. It's easy to find success if you define success as what you last did. But if you truly want to be measured as great, pursue purpose with passion because our God is a God of purpose and he's made you on purpose to do specific things. And what he's made you to do, the purpose you've been called to fulfill, matters. Please welcome my friend, Pastor Gregory Williams. Pastor Williams, please share your ministry with us. We are the Holy Faith Missionary Baptist Church at 11 o'clock service we have on Sundays. And also Tuesday, we have our Bible study at seven o'clock. We'd love for you to come out and smile with us for a while. Thank you, Pastor Williams. We're looking forward to your word on moving into your purpose. Absolutely, thank you very much. What a phenomenal message here. What a, a great day to talk about the purpose that God has before our lives. In the Bible, the book of Genesis, the 12th chapter and, and verse one and two, it says, now the Lord said to Abram, get out of the, your country from your family and from your father's house and to the land where I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and I'll make your name great and you shall be a blessing. I wanna talk about moving into your purpose, moving into your the purpose. When we define the word purpose, it's basically being what you were doing, what you were created to do. Robert Bain said, the purpose of life is a life of purpose. I want you to know that each and every one of us, we have a purpose for, before God. Abraham was called to move into his purpose. You have a purpose, I have a purpose, all of God's children have a purpose in our lives. I'm so excited that right now I'm, I'm feeling good about moving into the purpose that God has given me. I was recently interviewing Bishop T.D. Jakes and we were talking about his most recent book called Destiny. And in his book, he talked about, he talked about instinct and he talked about purpose moves you towards your destiny. It was put this way, that your purpose is basically like a metal and your destiny is a magnet. And I want you to know that your purpose will always be drawn into your destiny. It's good to know that whenever you're going to do the purpose of God that God has in your life, you need to know that God is going to challenge you to move, remove yourself from the familiar. You need to move from the past, remove from past relationships, remove from the fraternity that people used to be with old friends and old acquaintances. Sometimes when you are having your purpose of God, you need to remove from certain things. You need to remove from family members, some people you have to move from. Lot was challenged to move. God told him, Lot, you need to come out of 
Sodom and Gomorrah, his wife decided to look back. When it's time to move on the behalf of God, you can't look back, you have to keep on moving. When I think about my life and when I think things over and how God has brought me, when he took me from Long Island, New York, so many years ago, and I am now here, I didn't know that God had a purpose for me to do the things that I'm doing today, but it was destiny that has drawn me to the place that I am. And I want you to know it feels good to live out your purpose. Being a part of this great broadcast and being working close with Mr. Madelon and so many great pastors and helping them to find their purpose. It is a joy and I had no idea. It wasn't nothing that I thought about. I didn't dream about it. I didn't see it. But God has elevated me into my purpose to help people with their purpose. So what a joy it is to know that God has purposed your life. And I want you to know today, God has a purpose for you. God is doing something great in your life, but you have to be ready to move from where you are to where he wants you to go. There is something special God that wants to do for you. Now I want you to know as you move into the purpose, there's going to be some challenges. There's going to be some ups. There are going to be some downs. But the Bible says that all things that I want you to know, say that with me, that all things will work together for the good. Who the, them who call by the Lord and will call according to his purpose. So you ought to know today that your purpose, God is working it out for you. So continue to trust in the Lord and do good and keep your eyes upon the glory cloud. It is before you. And so be blessed today and know that God is working your purpose for you. I am Pastor Greg Williams of the Holy Faith Missionary Baptist Church. And I want you to know you can stop by Holy Faith and come and smile with us for a while. God bless you. Please welcome my friend, Pastor Vernon Gillum. Pastor Gillum, please share your ministry with us. Bless you. I'm Pastor Vernon Gillum, God's Tabernacle Deliverance Ministry, located in the beautiful city of Miami. We invite you to come share with us as our guest and worship Sunday mornings at 9 o'clock, then our Bible studies are Thursday nights at 7. We look forward to seeing you in the temple where we transform our lives one soul at a time. Thank you, Pastor Gillum. We're looking forward to your word on moving you, into sir. your purpose. Thank you. Good morning, my brothers and sisters, and we're grateful for another opportunity that the Lord has afforded us to come and to occupy some time in your living room, in your home, prior to you starting your day to day. And today we have a very interesting topic, one that I believe all of us at some point can identify with or would attest that we've had some questions uh, concerning our purpose. And so as uh, other great phenomenal men and women of God have already came in to share with you concerning your purpose, I just want to encourage you for a few minutes as it relates to moving into your purpose. Uh, have you been that person sometimes finding yourself asking God, uh, why am I here? What, what am I on this earth to do? What, what is it that I'm supposed to be doing, God? Because it, it doesn't seem as if though uh, my life makes sense to me based on the circumstances and the calamities and the challenges that I'm facing. I want to say with you that in order for you to understand your purpose, you got to be able to first know of the man who gave you the purpose. The Bible says, for God knew you when you was conceiving your mother's womb. He knew the very hairs that was on the top of your head. So it's impossible for us to come into our purpose without having a relationship with the Redeemer. We look at the word purpose. It is simply said that it's a word that is, uh, means anticipated outcome. Uh, it's an anticipated outcome. That means there were some things about you that God had already anticipated that was going to take place so that he will put you in a position that he can get the glory. Sometimes, my brothers and sisters, we're often hesitant, we often have reservations about trying to move into our purpose because we're often in prisons to other people's perceptions. But let me tell you something. Your purpose is something that is directly attributed to your obedience to God's word and his will for your life. In other words, when you're in God's purpose, that means there's something about you that has to die. There's something about your way of thinking that has to change. There's something about your way of believing has to change. And your perception about life has to be able to match up with what God believed for your life. I know it's not easy. I know sometimes it's hard to move uh, beyond our dark clouds. But let me say this to you that everything that you go through is working towards you moving into your divine purpose. Nobody can fulfill your purpose but you. You read the book of Genesis, the 38th chapter, around verses 7, 8, and 9, you discover where it talks about Judah had two sons, Ur and Onan, and the Bible declares that Ur was considered wicked in the sight of God. God had to take him out the way, but he gave a specific purpose to his brother Onan. I need you 
to go and impregnate your brother's wife, not for the sake of fulfillment, but that the promise of the inheritance that will be transferred and continued through the lineage of your family. But the Bible says, as you read it for yourself, Onan only took advantage of the opportunity for his own uh, self-gain. But when it came for him transferring the seed, the Bible said he wasted the seed on the ground. In essence, he then canceled his divine purpose from God. I want to say to you today, my brothers and sisters, whoever you may be sitting in your living room, don't waste your purpose, wasting your seeds on the ground, because oftentimes we try and rationalize God's purpose based on our understanding. That's why the Bible says, I take the foolish things of this world to confine the wise. God does not need our permission. He just needs our submission. Oh, I wish I say that again. He does not need our permission, but he needs our submission. If you submit to God, I promise you that God will make everything concerning your life plain and clear. And you need to know, moving into your purpose, you trust God, be obedient to his word, and allow yourself to die to yourself, then God will manifest that very thing that he was designed you to do before you even came on the scene. God bless you. Thank you for this opportunity that you've allowed us to share with you just for a few moments as you prepare to start your day. But remember, it matters. For the rest of this day, no matter where you go, it matters. And know that I'm moving into my purpose, and I can't be stopped now. God bless you. God keep you. We look forward to seeing you in the temple real soon. Please welcome my friend, Pastor George Rich. Pastor Rich, please share your ministry with us. Yes, my name is Pastor George Rich. I'm the pastor of P3 Church in the beautiful city of Pompano Beach, Florida. We have services every Sunday morning at 1030 a.m. Thank you, Pastor Rich. We're looking forward to your message today. Thank you. Well, the message that I want to give to you this morning is about moving into your purpose, moving from where you are to a place of being dormant, to a place of being stagnated and stuck but moving into your purpose. I wanna take my scripture uh, thoughts from Romans, the eighth chapter, the 18th and the 19th verse. It says that I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. In the 19th verse, it goes on to say that the creation awaits in eager expectation for the sons of God to be revealed. What is the earth waiting for? They are waiting for us those that are believers in Jesus Christ, for us to walk into our purpose. I believe that one of the greatest attacks of the enemy in this day is to rob us of what our purpose is. Because if we don't know our purpose, then we won't know our identity. And anybody that does not know who they are, they lack the influence and they lack the power. But when you know who you are, then you know what your purpose is. So for the next few moments, I just want to share with you the thought that my purpose is waiting on your arrival. In that 18th verse, it says that I consider that my present sufferings are not even worth to be compared with the glory that will be revealed. Um, something interesting here that the uh, Apostle Paul shares is about our sufferings. He says that present sufferings, to say present, oftentimes will imply that there is past and there is future. See, even if you are a believer, you will have times of sufferings. Some of us call it trials. We call it tribulation. We call it storms. But whatever your suffering is, it is only for a moment. Um, and God will use all of your sufferings to work together for your good. In fact, in the same eighth chapter of the book of Romans, in the 36th and 37th verse, it gives us this analogy. It says, as it is written, for your sake, we face death all the day long. We are considered as sheep for the slaughter. But in all of these things, we are more than conquerors through him that have loved us. Aren't you so glad that God loves you? Even if we are sheep, God loves us so much that he won't let the wolves take us out. There is something that is working in us that counters all of the suffering, all of the opposition that we have when it comes to our purpose. It's not worth to be compared with the glory that 
that will be revealed. When I read this verse, I get a picturesque of someone holding a scale. And in this scale, on one side, it has everything that I have ever gone through. It has my trials, it has my pain, it has my suffering, it even has every broken relationship that I have ever had. And it is weighing that scale down. But then the scripture says it's not worth to be compared to the glory that will be revealed. So what's on the other side of the scale? It's my purpose because my purpose has a story. And when my story hooks up with his story, then there will be glory. It's not worth to be compared. So all of the pain that you have ever suffered, all of the anguish, all of the disappointment, your purpose is even greater than that. So the scripture says that earth is waiting on the sons of God to be revealed. It is waiting on us to walk in our purpose. I don't know what your purpose is, but guess what? Somebody is waiting on it. Um, when me and my wife, when we were celebrating our ninth marriage anniversary, um, we had a beautiful black party. Um, we sent out invitations. Um, it was on a Saturday evening at six o'clock. We had sent these invitations out months in advance. So on the day of that event, we were eagerly waiting in expectation. Then came four o'clock, then came five o'clock. We are sitting there waiting for someone to come into the room. But then people started coming in step after step, person after person, and the expectation that we had was now fulfilled because the main event was there. What is the main event? That is your purpose. Somebody is waiting on you to walk into your purpose. I know that you have family, you have friends, you have constituents, but guess who else is waiting on you? The Bible says that God is waiting on you. Just like the prodigal son's father, he sees us from afar off and he's waiting that we will walk into our purpose. So wherever you are, whatever you are doing, make up your mind today that you are going to move into your purpose because it's waiting on your arrival. My name is, is Pastor George Rich and I am the pastor of P3 Church in the city of Pompano Beach, Florida. We would love to see you on Sunday morning at 1030 a.m. God bless you. Have a wonderful morning. Please welcome my friend, Pastor I.W. Hepburn. Pastor Hepburn, please share your ministry with us. Our ministry is the Star of Bethlehem Missionary Baptist Church. We're located in the city of West Park. Our service times are 7.30 a.m., 9 a.m., 11 a.m., and on Wednesday nights at 7.30. We'd love to see you there. Come on by and be blessed. Thank you, Pastor Hepburn. We're looking forward to your word today. Praise God. We certainly thank the Spirit of God present today for the Word of God that has been given to us this morning from these wonderful pastors, encouraging all of us to move forward into our purpose. The Bible says in Exodus 9 and 16, but I have raised you up for this very purpose, that I might show you my power and that my name might be proclaimed in all the earth. And then in Proverbs 20 and 5, the Bible reads, The purposes of a person's heart are deep waters, but one who has insight draws them out. There are many believers who are part of the family of the faithful who are somewhat unsure about their role as it relates to the cause of Christ. You may find yourself asking a question of yourself, well, now that I'm in the church, I've accepted Christ as my Savior, I've confessed Him as Lord, I've taken the first step, but what is it that I do now? What plans should I make? What moves should I embrace? What direction should I take? I'm in the church, but what now? And this can be when and where the purpose of God is revealed to the new believer. Purpose, according to Oxford, in this case or for this cause, is when is the reason for which someone has been created or the reason that someone exists. It is a person's resolve or their determination to initiate, in this case, the cause and effect of Christ. Listen, this word purpose, as it relates to the work of God for the child of God, purpose is the call that Christ has placed upon your life. And here's that question again, now that I'm in the body of Christ, now that I'm a part of the church, what is it that I'm supposed to do? What part of kingdom building am I called to? 
And according to the Bible, our purpose or our reason for being, according to Isaiah 43 and 7, is to bring glory back to God. The Bible says there in verse number 7, even everyone who is called by my name, whom I have created, listen, for my glory, whom I have formed, whom I have made. Simply put, child of God, you have been created to show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. You are purposed to proclaim his greatness, to lift up and to magnify his holy name. And according to the book of Romans, Listen, our lives, our walk, our talk should be able to prove what is that good and acceptable and perfected will of God for our lives. Listen, your life should speak volumes about the God that you serve. And then as you begin to praise him for his wonderful works in your life, it will prompt you not only to declare the glory of God, but also you will find yourself walking in and working in the ministry area that Christ Christ has purposed for your life. Listen, I'm not talking about having a PhD in talking a good game, but now actually being a part of something that is meaningful for the cause of Christ. In other words, spiritually and physically walking in and working in the will of God for your life. Listen, there are so many of the children of God in the house of God today that are shackled by our initial question, I'm saved? but I don't know where or what God has for me to do. And now the problem with that statement is we begin to become somewhat complacent, satisfied, and contented with where we started in Christ. And with that contentment comes stagnation. And what grows from stagnation is the constructed ability to do absolutely nothing. The Bible teaches us that as we accept Christ as our personal Savior, we ought to get to know him whom to know is life eternal. In other words, when you are in relationship with someone, you not only know what you expect from them, but you also begin to understand what it is that they are expecting from you. So now, now, if you don't understand what your purpose is in Christ, then the Word of God gives us some direction in, in James 1 and 5. From the Living Translation, the Bible says, listen, if you don't know what God wants you to do, then ask Him. Don't sit there like a bump on a log. Ask God. Don't go in another direction. Ask God. God wants to work with him and with us and through us to accomplish the goals that he has set up individually for our lives, that his holistic goal for mankind might be fulfilled. All you need to do is remember that God will do exceeding abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think according to the power that works in us. And that power is is readily available to you right now. All you need to do is ask. It matters that we are purposeful and moving into our purpose in Christ Jesus. God bless you, and we'd love to see you at the Star of Bethlehem Missionary Baptist Church. I'm Reverend I.W. Hepburn, Jr., and we'd love to have you come by and worship with us. God bless you. God keep you.